Hey YouTube, John here again. Um, this video has been recorded at ISO 3200 so it may be a bit grainy but I wanted to do this lighting setup for um, a few more different lighting setups than I've done before. Um, it is more or less for the novice. Um, the experienced photographer may pick up a, a little couple of tricks. I, I don't know but basically to start off with I've got my Umbrella which is a 91cm which I bought from SMIC and I've got my 58TX, I'm using the Pixel King trigger in manual so I've already set it up for the, uh, the key light I've got the black cloth at the back, it's just a bed sheet I'm just going to do some half length shots I've got this in here because I want, I've only got so many stands and I want to put my, uh, another flash and something, another couple of things on the other stands so I'm going to put a reflector in here in a minute but what I'm going to do just for the sake of the video is I'll just, now I've got my, I'm just going to take a test shot. Now I know I've already set my exposure. My umbrella shaft is halfway down the umbrella. Now I don't usually do that, but I found out that if I, if I can get the flash as nearer to the umbrella as I can and pull the diffuser out on the flash so that it still fills the umbrella with light. So keep going with your shaft until till we diffuse it out so that so that your umbrella is not quite getting fully illuminated and then just pull it back until it fully illuminates and then get it as near as you can if you look this is only 10 to 12 inch away from him so it will give you a softer light um, and you sort of still get the same power out of the flash because obviously when you pull the diffuser down you lose a little bit of power um, but because the flash is a lot nearer to the umbrella and I can have the umbrella nearer to the subject it's, I'll still gain that stop back whereas if I pull the umbrella right out and put the diffuser back in I'll still get the spread in the umbrella but I'll lose a lot of light as well so I'm going to take a test shot which you will see on the PC so I'm going to do like uh, just underneath his, his breast right from 3, 2, 1, good and voila and here's your base shot set up the key light this is your first shot all these files that you're going to see are unedited straight raw files out of the camera now you'll see that on the PC now just quickly I'm going to bring in a reflector it's going to be held by a chair and I'll show you the difference basically I'm going to build the shot up so we're going to go again right from 3 to 1 pal and just check that out and there, I've actually got a Rembrandt lighting pattern. Well, and that's your first image if you remember, and then that's the one I've just taken now with the reflector. Right, YouTube, hi, back again. So basically, I, I'm hoping, I don't know how you can see it, there's a, a raw flash here. No, you're all right, then you don't need that. Uh, it's about this position. I've not got much room in the house, and um, it's just above his head and pointing back on his shoulders now. Um, I can put an umbrella on it and stuff like that but you can do anything with this backlight if you want to spread it and make it more evenly I will try one with an umbrella on in a minute but for now I'm just going to take a shot with a rim light which is 3, 2, 1, really. there you go let's just make sure that everything's looking good the thing with the rim light you've got to be careful because Sometimes, when I used to first start using a rim light like this, I used to always turn it up too much. You want to just use the previous picture on your camera and check that the one afterwards just spills a bit of light on his shoulders and his hair. Now, um, and you'll find out that'll be enough. If you, if you can really see it when you get up on PC, you'll notice that it was too much. Now, I just want to talk about camera settings. I'm at ISO 100. Uh, 1 200 of a second shot speed and f7.1 now I've got this one working in manual and it's been controlled by my pixel kings but because I'm not moving the light I'm not really messing with it I wish that I've actually put that flash as the rim light because I, I had to keep going up to the rim light about 10 times then to get it absolutely spot on so if you've only got one off camera flash use that as your rim because to be honest once you set this light up as your key light, it, it pretty much doesn't change if you're using a black background. You can pretty much just leave it as is. And, and another thing I found out, try not to push your ISO up because what happens when you're using a black background, what I found out is if I push my ISO up to say, because I want to go to an F8, 
in, what happens is it becomes, because your sensor becomes slightly more sensitive to the light, it sometimes picks up a bit of spill on the background as well. So, um, try to keep your eyes so low as possible and then it won't pick up any slight overspill that goes onto the background. I mean, I'm looking at these now and they look pretty much black, jet black out of the camera, no editing to do. I mean, you can't always 100% tell until you get on the PC, but they look really black. And I never start punching my ISO up instead of turning the light up and down and being lazy. You can do that if it was, if you weren't shooting against a black background, you could do it no problem. But I found out when doing it on background, being lazy and putting your ISO up instead of manually going and turning the power up and down on your flashes or whatever, don't help. So that flash is in manual, Pixel Kings, and then the other flash is the YN560, and that is in S1 to just pick up the normal. When that flashes, that flashes. Okay, so now I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do now, but I'm... So, hey YouTube, back again. So, what I've done for this video is I've swapped the umbrella for a studio light. In fact, let me just turn that a little bit further away so we get a bit more fill. I've swapped it for an umbrella uh, at a studio light so that I can use two flash guns now. I've got two flash guns. I don't know if you can see them. There's one here where my hand is and the other one. What I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to do a, a beauty shot lighting. I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to fire one flash over his left shoulder. So looking at me, Ethan. Well, and here's the shot with the first light set up. There's a slight little flare, but that's a two second to fix in post-production. We'll do that at the end. Right, on to the second light. Right, now you'll see that on the PC, that's a rim light and also coming into one side of his shoulder. I'm now going to stop the video and I'm going to set the other light up on the other side to do the identical same thing. Then I'm going to bring in the key light to loop, uh, light the side of his face and then fill in with the reflector. So I'll just set the other flash up. So hey YouTube, back again now with both flashes at the back. You'll see the uh, pictures on obviously on the machine. Right, as you can see, there's the light on the left and the light on the right. I, I actually, looking at this, uh, because I was rushing the video, because the baby started crying, I wished I'd have had this right light spill a bit on the face as well. But it doesn't matter, everything doesn't have to be 100% perfect. But there's the nice rim light set up with a slight bit of editing to do here just to fix the flare. That sometimes happens um, and you have to watch out for it but you can fix it in two seconds in post-production. And there you go, I've got a nice even lighting, coming in, lighting the back of him up, lighting his shoulders up, that's done with two flash guns. Um, now I'm gonna bring in the studio light, because I haven't got any more flashes, to fill in his face, and then uh, to fill in the right hand side and the reflector. I'll do that now, I should just better turn that on, without turning off the video. Right, Ethan, looking at me, and we should have. You can come in, Kelsey. Ethan. Right YouTube, sorry about that, I just adjusted the power on the umbrella a bit, it was a little bit dark if you ask me. So now this is the finishing shot. And this is the end result, so we went from one flash to two flashes to backlighting and to the end result. And like I said to you before, there's a slight little glare here, which wants fixing in post-production. Oh, let me just reset that. Which wants fixing in post-production. Um, it does happen to you sometimes that, um, usually to be honest, I usually snoot. I usually snoot the two flashes at the back to do this or use a softbox. Um, but for the purpose of the video, I didn't. Now, I'd just like to point something out that happens without using a light meter. And it happens quite a lot to me, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm happy for it to do so. But as you can see, um, the flash head wasn't quiet. If you look, it hasn't quite caught that side of his face as it has that side, which ideally I wanted roughly identical lighting on one side and the other. Um, and if I just go to this shot with Ben, this is actually a better result where I realised that it wasn't spilling onto Ethan's cheek. Um, and I actually, as you can see, that's out of the camera. That's, that's a better result. And I will say now that without using light meters, now looking at it, that, that flash on the left looks slightly brighter than the one on the right. Now, unfortunately, that sort of stuff happens when you're not using light meters. 
um, and if I'd like meters I could have metered one side and then got the other one exactly the same um, but I don't really use light meters uh, and as you can see you get a good enough result I mean if you wanted to just dull them down a bit you could just bring the recovery up and it'll just bring down those highlights a little bit uh, warm the shot up a little bit give it a bit of punch add a bit of fill um, pump up the blacks a little bit um, pump up the contrast pump up the clarity and we go before and after and just a really nice lit, nicely lit shot um, Ethan didn't actually get the winner there there's a bit of glare as well I've got a bit of glare there which I fixed on the next shot um, watch out for glare because sometimes it does happen and like I say you will make it's not really a mistake it's still good enough is that shot I don't suppose it'd be good if it were a proper glamour shot you'd want everything 100% perfect but me I don't care about perfection I just know that that is a nice lighting pattern to use and it's near enough for me um, if I was ever getting paid a lot of money to do it I think I'm going to invest in a light meter to be honest I don't really use them but I, for this sort of work today it would have been absolutely perfect um, but I just like to try run and gun a bit and I don't usually use light meters very nice right so that's that's the finishing shot there uh, basically one flash behind him to the left one flash behind him to the right obviously I'm going to show you the pictures as I built the shot up which I didn't do before um, and this is more of a beauty lighting and it's a really nice lighting to use on a, on a bird on a girl Are you up for it no Are you up for a couple of shots no right we've got a girl here but she won't stand in front of the camera um so i'm going to do now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do what you call a proper glamour shot i'm going to finish off with just one shot for today because i'm in i'm in a rush and as you can see people are coming in our house which is fine but I'm going to now do one that I have a light above his head coming directly down for a butterfly lighting pattern and then I'm going to use a reflector underneath to fill in the shadows and I'll show you the shots as I build them up. Right YouTube, for the last shot today because I'm in a bit of a rush I've got Ethan here, I've got the umbrella up, let's just put it more or less two in it's more or less above his head and going to come straight down and hit him in the face I'm just going to do that shot for now, this is a good beauty shot to do on really nice looking women if I ever get one to photograph. Right, and as to be expected, you'll see on PC, there's some shadows underneath his chin and on the left and right of his face. So what I'm going to do is, without further ado, I'm going to bring in the reflector and I'm going to use the white bit. You can use the gold or the silver bit to fill, but the white bit's good enough. And it's slightly angled, can you try, try not so it doesn't knock my lights down? Right, I'll hold it, well, I I'm not using the mid right, there you go. <coughs> and, oops, I don't know what's happened now. Alright, okay. We'll just do that again because she looked really retarded. <laughs> right, there we go, three, two, one. Right, and relax, Ethan, steady away, get it. <laughs> right, never say that to any customers. <laughs> I'm just having a mess with Ethan and Ben. And that is really, I mean, that, Ethan's not a model, sorry to say, Ethan, you can put that down now, kid. Um, he's not a model, but that is, you'll see on PC, that is a really good shot to do, especially a nice head and shoulders or a, maybe under the breast line of a nice looking lady with, you, you'll see anyway, it's really, really, it really is nice. And I've also left. I don't know if I mentioned, I've left one of the flashes on behind to just give a bit of a kick of light. I just didn't bother turning it off. Um, so it's actually a three light setup, is that? A studio light for the main light and two flashes at the back. I am hoping, I will do some, another one like this with different lighting setups. I am hoping to get another couple of flash heads, which will mean I'll have to mess around with studio lights. And thanks for watching.